Well guys, here we are, Tōrere, we're all set up camp. Um, amazing people here on the orchard. And um, there's a the swagger, a little setup. Here's old cheese, hey eh, cheese? Hey. We've got toilets and a shower just in that room there. A little kitchen there for keeping our food cold and here we are. I'll tell you what guys, uh, I'll go through a bit of history about this place in a minute, but um, we are so lucky, eh cheese? Yep. Right, we've turned up here, spoken to uh, Walt, and his mother Vanessa, Vanessa Hayes, and uh, I'll tell you what, the macadamia uh, orchard, one of the biggest in New Zealand, well I think it's the only one in New Zealand, um, up here in the Portiki, it's actually Tōrere, just south of the Portiki, and um, they've got one of the biggest pahutakawa trees in the country, we're going to go and have a look at that soon and tell you a little bit of history around the ancestors. <laughs> here we are guys, look, there's, there's Walt and Vanessa right there, the ones I just spoke about, so they run this orchard and there's a banana. I was just showing you guys the banana patch, mate. So they oh. had the had the privilege of eating a fresh banana today, didn't you? Straight off the top. Never seen a banana tree in New Zealand. And there's a banana bunch up there. If you can see that on camera, I don't know if you can, but uh, just up there, there's a huge bunch. Bigger string you'll see it, but um, crazy to see the bananas growing in New Zealand like this. It's a huge, awesome tree. So yeah, just one of many features we'll show you. And that's your bananas. Look at that, guys. Oh, it's just come off that branch. Look at that. Look Yeah, here's Flynn. Look, you just ate a banana. Like, literally opened the banana off the bunch. What's that taste like, Flynn? Straight off the tree, mate. Is that better than the normal one? Yep. A lot more denser and a lot more creamier. I had one earlier. Amazing bananas. Grown from New Zealand. <laughs> Get into it, mate. Fruit's good for you. Bean. So anyway guys, we're at the one of the largest Pahutakawas in New Zealand. Um, arguably one of the biggest, because it's never been uh, recorded, but I'll tell you by the look of this, it's probably bigger than the one that's on the east coast, uh, Wai Rapaway. So uh, we'll go up and have a look, eh? Come in here and check, check this out. Look at this. This is amazing. And the story has it is that the ancestors of this land used to come up under here for shelter, under this big Pahutakawa tree and do their carvings and some people say it's all stories and it's, and it's not true but uh, Vanessa who, uh, who works on this land of 40 years from the Māori Trust bought this land and runs this macadamia and uh, been here for 40 years she's been farming this place in the orchard and she found some old carving tools uh, pre-centric ones actually like dated um, back to when people come in and brought their walkers in, in the swampland here up to the mountains behind me, the hill. And this Pahutakawa used to grow straight up. A big slip's come down, and you can see it actually just up there at the knot. Straight over to, where am I, about there, just to the left of my hand. You'll see that there is um, pretty much, there's like a big backfill of, of landslip, and that's pushed the Pahutakawa. So it's actually growing out this way now, instead of straight up. So that is the Pahutakawa. And uh, bad things happened to Vanessa. Health, business wasn't going so well. And then uh, her tamariki, her son, which is uh, Walt, and his sisters, he's got two sisters, went to his mother's house, Vanessa's, picked up those old carving tools and brought them back to their right belonging here underneath the Pahutakawa. And uh, all luck has now been going forward, blossom. And he dug a hole underneath the Pahutakawa at the back and put those tools back right next to the base of the tree. And he said a lot of people, this tree's about 1,600 years old, and uh, it's seen a lot of people come and go. A lot of ancestors here for his whānau that are on the uh, Pōtiki coast here of Tōrere. And uh, yeah, it's huge, huge bit of history here. And uh, he takes people up for climbs and there's old cheese, look, hello. <laughs> hey mate, how are you? Good. What do you think of this big tree? Very fun to climb. Very fun to climb. As Bolt said, it's a very really good climbing tree. And has a lot of history, eh? And he's telling us the whole story, eh? And I tell you guys, like, man, you know, you talk about ancestors and history and how it has, some people would believe in, uh, you know, uh, sacredness. This is a sacred part of this land and it's been told to be left like so. Uh, people wanted to come and do uh, testing on the tree to check, see how old it is and, and all the tests that you would do on the tree to find out all that information and the iwi here he said, nah, 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 leave it. This is uh, what it's meant to do, flourish in its own environment. And uh, whether it's proven to be the biggest or one of the biggest doesn't matter, because uh, they know what it's like and they know what this tree has done. 
So there it is, yeah, it's huge. That is massive. Like the trunk, you can't even walk around it. It is huge. This is one big, all around me, I've seen in the middle of the Pahutakawa tree. One of the biggest in New Zealand, if not the biggest. Just not recorded. Look at that. Man, how cool is that, Flynn? Pretty yeah, cool, yeah. eh? And just to think that ancestors used to come here in Waka and hide under shelter here, underneath these big branches, and do their carvings out of the sun, eh, before they took their waka back where there's an orchard now, that was to be all uh, swamp lands and ocean, and now it's just ocean on the other side. All this has been turned into harvesting uh, macadamias, so it's a macadamian orchard. It's just unbelievable, the history here, and you get a feeling of belonging here, you know, and what, uh, what Vanessa and Walt done today has welcomed me in and took me through this whole story of this whole place and I'm privileged, I'm absolutely privileged to know the inheritance of some of this land of Oputuki or Tōrere, I say Oputuki, that's, that's the town um, further north there and uh, Tōrere is this place here which is about 15 minutes south and I tell you what, this is amazing feeling just being on the Pahutakawa tree knowing the story behind it almost get a little bit of eerie feeling so it's pretty cool let's go check the orchard out well here we are guys toward the orchard macadamia orchard and these are the seedlings the only nursery macadamia nursery in new zealand and uh that's it here so this is all the nursery little plants and these are ready for pickup they go out to farmers or people who grow them and then contracted to buy the nuts back off them back to here they get processed which will take through the process situation soon and uh, they're the bigger trees there they have a whole block down here and a massive block up across the road which they took us for a tour earlier and then basically um, the seedlings they go to different places around New Zealand and then they're contracted to the nuts so once they drop their nuts sounds a bit pun once they drop the once they drop their nuts off and then basically they come back here they buy them back here and then they go processing ready to be in the product of what we see inside the packets um, very shortly we'll take you through so that's the nursery the only one in New Zealand and then other bigger trees there and there's a massive block up across the road but they've got acres of, of trees so we're going to take you through the process what it looks like when it falls off the tree to when it gets processed and what it looks like before it goes to Gisborne to the chef they call them who processes it into the products you see in the paddocks in the packets not the paddocks let's go take a look so this is what macadamia nuts look like when they fall off the tree, the brown, uh, the green, and underneath there is a brown shell. But to get that off, they call it the husking process. So this is a husker here, it goes into that, and then basically comes down, the husks, comes out, goes into there, goes up another hopper, the husks again, come through and have a look at where it comes out. Comes out to the sorting table, so it comes up to there, comes through this machine here, rolls down, and this is what it looks like here. Car cracked, cracked, and then it ends up looking like that part there once it's sorted, a little brown looking like a walnut almost. Um, really like a nice, nice uh, smooth shell. And then it goes around into this machine here called a dryer. And there's 20% uh, moisture in it when it comes out. And then they get it down to single figure. So about 9, 9.5% 9 moisture. And here they are here. This can hold over a tonne, probably 1.3 tonne of nuts. Then they get wrapped up, taken out, and then off to uh, the chef, they call them. And, Gisborne and then turns it into the packets which I'm about to show you now for the products that go around um, New Zealand. Here's uh, Walt and uh, you just landed a massive contract boat. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we're pretty happy um, for, to get on to Air New Zealand. Air um, New Zealand. We've got a contract with Air New Zealand for the next three years. Um, awesome. Yeah, on the, sorry though, <laughs> it's on the long haul flights so it's not domestic unfortunately. Cool. Um, long haul flights on first class. So. And what product is it? Because you do a few products, eh? Yep, so it'll be our cinnamon glaze. Cinnamon glaze is going in New Zealand on business class and that international flights. So that's that's all pretty pretty exclusive. Pretty awesome, pretty exclusive. And for Tori there, like man, that is huge. Mm. That'll get you guys on the map, mate. Um, and the products they do, we've tasted them actually. Me and Cheese have had, been lucky to taste some of their products. and. Oh mate, next to nothing like that is second to none. They're the top class product. So all from Tauriri, run around here, that's the process, into the chef, finishes as a product in the packet. Mean, awesome stuff guys. So keep an eye out for that uh, macadamias from Tauriri. You'll see them coming to a place near you. If you haven't got a online flight, get out of here. If you're not going on near New Zealand to find the product, jump online. Jump online, look up Tauriri macadamias, and they sell uh, online, so they're not in, not in grocery stores, they're not in dairies, but you can buy online. So look up Tauriri Macadamias, and you'll see their Facebook page on there. Stick an order in, and they'll send it out to you. Awesome stuff. I've tried it, and I'll begin some for myself.
mean it. So this is what this orchard does guys, look at this. Tauriri macadamia chocolate mix. Oh, oh. Dry roasted, sea salt, small packets, they do big packets of those. I've got the big chocolate mix here. Macadamia, these ones here are nice. Cinnamon glaze, they taste almost like a uh, donut. A very nice cinnamon donut. Then you've got the uh, this stuff here for like um, batter or crumb, fish crumb when you stick it on your on your, on your fish. So uh, yeah, that's sort of the stuff they do there. And they're uh, called um, Tauriri Macadamias. So Tauriri Macadamias. And I'll tell you what, beautiful. All New Zealand made.